folks, it's Professor Seymour again. Hope you're having a great afternoon. I wanted to check in here um, with you before we got to the next, to the to the last stories that, that we're we're exploring here, before we get to the, the drama. And uh, now that you've finished, um, you know, up through Sonny's Blues, and uh, most of you have responded to Cathedral uh, as well, and I think you're probably finding that uh, the stories are a little more challenging as we go along and they depend on some things that that you wouldn't naturally uh have thought of if you were just considering uh some of the things I've asked you to consider in Uncle Ben's choice and uh, in A and P um yes we want to c- continue to look at the narrator and question the veracity the truthfulness of of the narrator ask ourselves what the plot is, though I have to remind you, as you're beginning to discover, certainly with Cathedral, that the plot is often, by far, not the most important thing. And we're moving towards the ability to trying to find the significance of the story. Why these stories? Why these fictions? Um, And I think with Cathedral, it's very obvious to see that this is not about plot. Uh, it's basically about an evening spent between a, a man who can see, uh, who is our narrator, and a man who can't see, and what one learns from the other, and these very uh, interesting relationships that exist between our narrator and the wife, and this mysterious stranger who has a relationship with the wife. So obviously here we're talking about relationships, as uh, the prompt suggests. So you want to look for relationships. Um, Relationships were very important in talking about Sonny's Blues, how these relationships, how this particular relationship between two brothers uh, develops over time, and how one begins to develop a sense of empathy for the other. And and, and I wanted to... uh, touch upon Cathedral, asking you to uh, consider um, the events that happen very late in the story, and we often find the clues very late in the story, and they're only going to make sense to us if we've read very carefully what leads up to our final scenes, and uh, and very uh, and noted them, and, and made notations for ourselves. Um, <clears throat> we get to the swimmer. Um, uh, the author begins to bend our perceptions a little bit, um, in a little bit of a different way than, um, uh, than happens in Uncle Ben's Choice, uh, and, uh, What You Pawn, I Will Redeem, um, which, by the way, um, as you will see in a lecture coming up by Professor Crowley, which I've included in the, in the next assignment, has a lot to do with the mythology that uh, you're, you're going to learn about when you read Chekhov. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But in terms of the swimmer, uh, I suggested that you all read something about the author. Because uh, in this case, the author lived in a community very much like the the community that is written upon, written about in this story. And he had many... Uh, similar regrets in his life to those that I think we begin to see are felt by um, the main character in The Swimmer. <clears throat> now, I wouldn't normally suggest that you learn lots of biographical material about our authors, but in some cases it can make a real difference. In other words, when you get to the Chekhov piece, you may also help, it may help to understand that Chekhov was a, was a very strong anti- a smoker, anti-drinker. He was a, he was a, and he believed in an abstinence very strongly, um, which of course ties into the story. In the swimmer, um, we don't really have a plot. Is plot is used in a very rudimentary way. Is it about character to some extent, in the ways that our main character relates to those members of the community around him? But he plays tricks in terms of time, which is why I asked you to consider it almost as a dream. Short stories 
are always trying to reach a level of comprehension that goes beyond our everyday comprehension of the things that happen to us in our own lives, to take us to that, that realm where time breaks down. And time certainly does begin to break down in the swimmer. If you'll note, slowly, and this may have mystified you, and I'm sure it did, um, how does the change of the season begin to show itself in one afternoon? Why are all these things that happen to the neighbors seeming to have such consequences over the course of one or a few hours in a day? And what our author is doing, of course, is playing with this element of time. And so I want you to consider that <clears throat> strongly as you write about the swimmer. And again, I suggest uh, you know reading something about Mr. Cheever and his life, um, it will help you understand what he's trying to get at. Um, many of his stories emerge out of uh, what we think of as a suburban life, uh, especially out of, outside of New York City, <clears throat> a, a class of, of generally elite uh, moneyed people, and um, certainly reflect our author's a uh, sense of being a part of that community. And so, uh, again, here we're not, it's not about plot so much, not about character, it's more about what a, a man can grow up learning uh, about the sorts of life that exists in this elitist suburb, the consequences one may pay, when one falls stray to life's calamities, a man perhaps who didn't know what to do with his money, didn't know how to treat his friends, um, didn't know how to treat his wife, uh, all of those are part and partial of the story and the fact that he allows time to break down. Uh, and as, um, as um, Mr. Crowley will speak to in terms of Chekhov, the power of telling this story out of real time is that we will listen. We become mystified. And that, again, is what literature can do. And as Professor Crowley will also discuss, uh, this use of mythology. Think about the use of mythology in Uncle Ben's Choice. The sense of Mama Wote and the, the, the knowledge that all men in that community had about this woman who was a user, and who would take advantage of him. What impact that must have had on him uh, as he encounters what he believes to be this figure, this mythological figure, uh, whether it be a dream or in reality, uh, I ask you to decide yourself. Um, the uh, importance uh, in uh, what you pawn of the Indian... A heritage on Jackson Jackson, what he is led to believe, uh, the past, the consequences of his inheritance of his uh, ancestor's world, and the effect of that world on his own, um, the consequences, uh, of, if you want to look even deeper, uh, of the use of alcohol uh, on the Indians that goes back to the earliest um, mixing of whites and Indians uh, and, and original Americans and how that uh, the consequences of those live with us even to this day and uh, the, the almost uh, <clears throat> trap that Jackson finds himself in as a Native American in this world that he's unable to escape his past that follows him around in, in some sense the same way that the uh, the mythology in Uncle Ben's Choice follows him around. And, of course, it increases uh, the, mis the, the, uh, uh, the, the mystery that mythology can provide us uh, in these fictional stories. Um, so keep that in mind uh, as you write about the swimmer. Ask yourself, um, what, what is, how does it enhance this story? How does the even more fantastical 
qualities of the story increase its ability to tell a certain truth. Truths that Mr. Cheever holds dear about this community in which he lived. And uh, if he were to simply tell it in, in simple, factual manner, as, as Professor Crowley will address uh, for you when he speaks about the Chekhov story at home, what effectiveness would that have? But to tell it in a, in a more fantastical, magical, what's sometimes called magical realism, uh, to tell it uh, in that style, I think we might all agree, increases its effectiveness. And again, provides a reason why we read literature, why literature survives, why uh, Chekhov, who began writing short stories in the 1880s, his stories today, mostly about characters, uh, are, are still considered... Um, some of the greatest literature ever to be written. They're simple. Um, they're they're uh, straightforward, but they speak to us, even though they are mostly about a culture that's very distant to our own. They speak to us with certain truths, and, and that's what we're looking for in these stories. When we when we we use the term significance, what do these stories tell us as truths? What is significant about the way we feel having understood them, having read them? But reading them is not enough. We want to really move to the next step, which is to understand them, understand their subtleties, because they do hold truths that will speak wondrous uh, to all of us if we give them the opportunity. Now, think about cathedral. What kind of a man is our is our husband. What kind of a life does he live? And who is this man he lets into his house? What, what, is, the, what is the difference between these two personalities? And, and this woman caught in between, his, his wife, what consequences do you think she's paid in the past for staying with this, with this man? And what is she seeking? So again, here, relationships are very important. But when we get to the swimmer, relationships are not unimportant, but there is something else uh, having to do with the larger environment, the questions that he wants to propose, as in, in Sonny's uh, Blues. What, what, is the, what are the consequences of this place upon our characters? Uh, profound in, in all cases. Um, so I'm trying to keep these, uh, these little mini lectures to uh, uh, shorter. Um, and uh, I'll, I will be addressing you again uh, when it comes to our next section, which is drama, which um, I'm very excited about getting to. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, keeping up with your assignments. I'm enjoying very much uh, what I read every day. And um, I'm just about finished with my comments uh, for assignment five, and we'll soon be getting to assignment six. So uh, I haven't forgotten about our Skype meets. Um, I'm probably going to address that tomorrow, and we'll be sending out some kind of a, a sign-up sheet that you can all uh, uh, join. So we, we can at least have some moments to, to address where you are at this, at this point, because now you've, you, you've contributed a significant amount of number of, of assignments. So uh, I'm able to talk a little more specifically about the things that, that you want to keep moving forward with and, and the, the, the problems that you want to be addressing, uh, particularly for you. So uh, I hope you're enjoying these stories, and let's keep uh, let's keep moving forward. And uh, I'll meet you in video land very soon.